Welcome to the CEO Crowd Show. It's your host and coach Rebecca here and today we're talking all about travel. So this is the second part in our three-part travel series. Last week we spoke all about things that you have to think about before you go to the airport and an entire airport walkthrough. So if you're someone that's going to be traveling by plane and you want to do it well, then definitely check out last week's podcast. And for this week, we're actually diving into the mistakes that I have made while traveling for my business. There have been many. I have summarized them into four points. And hopefully my hindsight and reflection on this can really help you out with your foresight so that when you're planning trips, you don't get caught off guard by any of these things. So let's get started with, first of all, clarify the purpose of your trip. I think that many of us think traveling and working will be very idyllic. Like you're going to sit on a beach drinking a mojito and it's going to be sunny and beautiful and you're just going to be like working from your laptop and you're going to want to do that. And it's just like not accurate <laughs> because you get to those places and you want to explore them. You want to go and do things. If you're sitting by the beach, you want to like read a book. I think that Sometimes we think I'm going to go to this like beautiful location for a week that would be vacation like, but I feel like I have to bring work. So I'm going to like label it as a working vacation and then I'm not going to want to work while I'm there. And then I'm not going to achieve all the things I wanted to, or you have an experience like myself and my husband in Crete. I still think if you like message him just the word Crete, he would physically recoil at the message because we went to Crete it was just not long after I started my business I started my business in the March and we went to Crete in the May and when I started my business I had my first five-figure month and I was like we're going on holiday I started my business so I can run my business from anywhere in the world and I want to go on holiday so bless my husband like obliged and we were just dating at the time so he was like sure I'll come with you to this place and I was like awesome so <laughs> we went to Crete and we did not set realistic expectations for our business or for our downtime. And I'm a go with the flow kind of person. So I just kind of arrived and thought that we would have like loads of options of things to do. And it was going to be sunny and it was going to be beautiful. It was actually like a little, a little cold for me. Um, I think that Texas is warm and that's like 40 degrees or 110, depending on where you are in the world. I don't like it that hot personally. It was like very windy. We went in May. So the beginning of the season, like very beginning, not everything was open. We booked a hotel at the complete wrong side of Crete from the side where anything happens. And there wasn't any intention going into that trip other than like excitement for being somewhere that was hot and sunny because we lived in the UK at the time. And being able to work my business, that was it. And while it was really powerful for my mindset in one way, it was really detrimental in another way because I didn't have any idea of how I was going to run my business that way. And I didn't account for time change is a thing that's very important. I have since learned. But time change, when you book things, where you book things, what will you focus on? Having like a general schedule for your day can be really powerful because then you actually meet the intention or the purpose for the trip. The reason that Crete was so confusing was I couldn't decide and still don't know looking back what that trip was for other than just getting away into the sunshine. But I think at the time, like my, my heart was really calling me to hang out with my partner at the time. Like um, my husband was my boyfriend and I just wanted to spend time with him and I would get to spend more time with him than we had been spending together. So that was going to be cool. And then I also, for some reason, ended up posting on my social media like three times a day for like the whole week we were there, which was so not purposeful and made no difference in the grand scheme of things. I just felt like I had to be doing something and I didn't really know what I was doing because I was still at the very beginning of my business. I had no clue. So I did not have a purpose for the trip, a purpose for the day. I had no idea what to focus on. So I think that my first lesson is 
have an intention around what the trip is for. If you are going to rest and chill out and connect with people, rest and chill out and connect with people. If you are going for business and to do be in a beautiful location, then think, okay, well, where does business fit in? Do I do that first thing in the morning? Is that an afternoon thing? Is that something I do in the evening? And what will my energy look like at all those times of day? And do I really think that I will do that? Instead of being very aspirational and saying, well, we're going to wake up early. We're going to go for a hike. We're going to explore all day. And then in the evening, I'll sit down and do three hours of really hard, intense, focused work. Like that would not be me. But for some people, I have friends that are like total night owls, 100% up to them. They wouldn't get up early and do the hike, but it would 100% suit them. So remember that you're taking you with you on holiday, on a working trip, on a vacation. You're taking you with you. So think about how are you going to work in this new environment? And a great way to test this out is take a trip that's nearer home, just like a two, three day trip and treat it as if you're going to Italy for a month. If you want to do extended travel, because a lot of people want to do extended travel. It's not like really about the vacation. I was using a vacation example, but a lot of people want to run their business from a completely other country. So if you're doing extended travel, then still give yourself like a little tester, like three days in a different city that's near you. What do you do on those days? Treat it like you're in Italy or Australia or wherever it is that you want to go. How would you run your day? It can be really, really helpful. So have a purpose for the trip. And if the purpose is I want to be able to travel with my business for extended periods of time, think how does my schedule change if I'm not at home? Because the thing about travel is that it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to do things differently. And we don't think about it because we're so in the day-to-day. -day. Like myself, my husband, we go to the store on a Sunday morning and we get all our groceries. And it's so on clockwork now that we did this on a Saturday this week, this past week. And as soon as I got home, I just started meal prepping. That was not my intention. That was my habit because we build habits into our daily life. Now, if we were in Spain and we had to go to a carry four and buy all of our groceries there, extra thinking time. Is this the right thing that I want? It looks like the right thing, but does this can of peas have salt or no salt? I have to translate languages. Big deal. We don't give ourselves enough credit for how much we actually do in a day because we actually do a lot, but when it's habit, it's so easy. Like I do this, I find this in this place in the store. I then go home, I then meal prep. When we're in a different place, one step becomes 25 steps and takes so much more brain capacity that by the time you get home, you're like, I don't want to meal prep. This is not a habit that I have here. Whereas it's a habit at home. So you're going to replant all of these seeds of your habit in a new place. And that will take energy. So I would say that a part of that purpose <laughs> needs to be to look after yourself and rejuvenate yourself because there's going to be a lot of decision fatigue because it's all new decisions that you're making. You don't even know how to get to the store in the first place, right? So clarify the purpose of your trip and really think about the intricacies of how you're going to run your days. It's a really big deal. The second thing to consider is your travel companions. Choose wisely set your intentions together for sure so I actually went to Baltimore in December of last year and I went with a friend and it was really powerful because the friend that I went with was someone that does the work and I was there to do the work so that trip was I was going to be flying in one day and I had kind of afternoon evening the whole day the next day, I was in a product strategy sprint with uh, Build With Becky. If you've never heard of Becky Pearson, oh my God. She's amazing. Highly recommend. We love her. And I had a whole day with her. We were then going for dinner. And then the next day, we were. I was flying out in the afternoon. So 
essentially my friend lives decently close to Baltimore. She was like, I'll come along. She was like, I'll treat it as that day in the hotel. I will just like get some like downtime, get focus work. And I was like, amazing. So she picked me up from the airport because she's amazing. And we essentially just started talking about work. Work, 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 work. We were just talking about work. And then we went for food and we spoke about life and we caught up and we chilled out and we ate our food and it was just so good. We went to bed decently early and up the next morning, went to the gym together. Can I get a like, oh yes, these are the friends I want in my life. Like early riser at the gym, getting ready, went for coffee, go to the whole day. And she came and picked me up, bless her whole soul, that evening after the dinner. She was going to come to the dinner, but then she was working so hard and getting so much done. She was like, I'm just going to stay and get this done and I'll see you in like an hour, 30 minutes. I was like, yes, you have your own boundaries. You know what works best for you. You don't want to stop in the middle of something because you know you've got to get stuff done. And then she picked me up, chat again that evening, like, downloading from the day it was wonderful woke up the next day gym breakfast chat got on the flight best travel companion like best and my husband's the same my husband great travel companion wakes up early gets his work done then wants to just spend time with people I, I'm just very blessed because I've built these people into my life now have I traveled with people who are not the best travel companions absolutely and I can remember very clearly, they shall rename the nameless because I'm not a gossip. Years ago, this was before I started coaching and I was in network marketing and I traveled somewhere in Europe with uh, another person that was in the company with me. And it was just terrible. Like there was just so much drama. There was drinking. It just wasn't it wasn't what I get to experience now. And I'm so grateful for both experiences. But if I could impart on you the one experience that you really want, it's like good travel companions that actually want to do the work that don't see every single trip as an excuse to like go out and get absolutely smashed. So that's what I would say on travel companions, choose wisely because it does make a difference. It's group think. If one person's doing it and you're the only other one person with them and they're like, do you want to go to the bar? then you're going to probably say, yeah, if you're, if you're our like audience, you're probably going to be like a people pleaser. Okay. Taylor Swift is one too. It's not a bad thing. So if you're a people pleaser, you're going to say, yeah, sure. But if you're a people pleaser and you travel with a companion, that's going to do the work. You're also going to do the work. Even if you didn't want to, you're going to do it. So surround yourself with these people and that's why I mean that's why the entire CEO crowd exists is to get you these like ride or die entrepreneur friends so we'll talk about that in a hot second but we'd love you to come along and experience what we do because creating these friendships is the the making of your business is the friendships that you are willing to keep so with that let's get into things that are a little bit more practical so the third tip that I would give you is reliable wi-fi seems very standard but the thing about wi-fi is that you really have to ask people that have been to that particular place before or read reviews of that particular place i will get really in depth i will call the hotel and if it's an airbnb i will directly message them and be like can i just double check that your wi-fi can hold an hour long Zoom call with, you know, 30 people in it. Because I want to know that I definitely can run my business from there. And also you can check if there are co-working spaces around there. You can sometimes put yourself into a co-working space, even if it's just for the day so that you can take your calls and you zero in and you make everything on that one day, whatever you need to do to get a reliable Wi-Fi, so important. I remember trying to run a business from New Zealand, absolute nightmare. This was also, you know, five years ago now. So I'm sure they've come further, but I just really struggled. The Wi-Fi was so bad. I just couldn't even do my work. So when I got to places where I could do the work, I was just like attached to my phone. And 
this actually happened to me more recently as well in Pennsylvania not this past time we went but the time before I was delivering a summit so this is my first summit I'd ever delivered alongside um, my friend Tam Tamara at All Women Rock shout out we love you and I was doing this summit and I had to do it with 5G oh my lord I had so much fear it was just going to cut out it wasn't going to work it fortunately held up but that's because the wi-fi kept cutting out all morning all morning all morning on one-to-one clients on group I was just like this is not going to work and 5g literally saved my behind but that's why this is so important and also if you're doing something completely new and you don't travel all the time so you're not traveling for like three months to be in a place or even if you are make the new thing not the beginning of your trip so that you know you have the lay of the land like I said a minute ago there are so many more decisions that you have to make and wi-fi seems like everyone everyone's got that down like everyone knows zoom calls covid has changed the world I totally understand there is a part of that but some people still don't care like some wi-fi still sucks so you have to be really conscious of the wi-fi situation you're going into we even feel it myself and my husband when we worked from Shetland where my parents are the wi-fi the last time we were there terrible I had to go to my sister's house so that I could like get on the wi-fi and that leads us to tip four consider your background your privacy and your peace I was so fortunate that on that Shetland trip I could go to my sister's house I could sit upstairs in her room and I found like oh, she has white walls so I was able to sit against a white wall on the floor with like boxes and suitcases and all the things so it doesn't have to look pretty or perfect behind the scenes y'all this certainly what's going on right now nope there's like a ring light off to the side there's a microphone like it's all going on there's a water there's a whole board behind me that I can see like it's all all going on it doesn't have to look pretty behind the scenes but when you're on camera you want it to look a certain way a certain aesthetic and if you don't have that oh it can be drama I took a call from the floor the other day and there was no like clear background wall so I had to sit on my knees for 30 minutes now I used to be a yoga teacher but like even for me that was so hard and so painful couldn't feel my feet for like at least 20 minutes and if you put yourself in places where you just don't know what the background is going to look like it could be super dark like that's something else like I have a ring light that I travel with because if it's super super dark it just looks weird like people are burying their soul to you on the other end of a one-to-one and you're like and if you smile then all I can see is like a very like light shade of white because everything else is so dark like it's so silly it seems but it's so important in the moment because you look at yourself and I think that's something that people usually don't like to do they don't like to look at themselves so imagine if you don't like to look at yourself already and then your lighting sucks and like the background is all like you're sitting against a chest of drawers you're not going to feel good going into that call you're not going to feel powerful you're not going to feel like you're like hyped up and energized and excited and you know I stand to do these because I want the energy if you're like crunched in a little corner you're not going to feel good about that and also you have to consider privacy especially if you're doing one-to-one even if you know you're the only person that can hear them and someone else can hear you speaking back to them you have to be so conscious of the privacy you know and your peace that's really important is that you have peace to get prepped for your calls and to be able to deliver in a way that you want to show up when you're maybe in an environment where not everyone is on that wavelength with you right I'm just thinking for like people that maybe don't get along with their families and they go and spend time with their families and have to run their businesses like that's hard so you have to consider your background your privacy your peace and where your calls are going to take place what the lighting is going to be and put things in place to help you so that you feel confident to show up on calls and as a final point this is actually something I heard from some dear friends that do literally 
travel the world with their business right now that I believe that they're a couple they're in Colombia and a few months ago they were somewhere else in South America you know they travel a lot and their top piece of advice was have a plan and be willing to throw away the plan so you can plan for all of these things I plan for all these things and sometimes it still doesn't work out just last week I was taking a call from the floor they don't always work out they're not always perfect but you're always going to learn and something that we learned from last week is that when I have those calls we have to book a hotel room we just have to that's a standard that we're now having to set because it's important for us to have privacy and peace and know what's going on and hotel rooms always have desks and they always have decently aesthetically pleasing backgrounds and that matters to me and I don't want to put the fake backgrounds they give me the they give me the heebie-jeebies but to each their own like if you love them I have some friends who use them and they look seamless and I love that for them I don't want to use them I want to be real and authentic and connected and be here and be able to like touch the things in my background and like that's important to me and it's completely up to you what's important to you but have a plan for the things that are important and be willing to throw away the plan and try and figure it out. Just like, you know, the Wi-Fi is not working, you have to go to 5G. We were actually watching the Meg 2 the other day and I love that I can bring that in because I love me some sharks, but they were talking about Jason Satham because obviously the only person in the world that could like punch a Megalodon in the face is Jason Satham. So he's like talking to this kid that he's essentially like taken on as his own daughter and he's like, we solve the problem in front of us and then we go on to the next one. And that's what I'm telling you about having the plan and throwing the plan away is that you will just come up with problems and you will overcome them and you will do better next time and you will put things in place and you will keep making mistakes. Like I'll keep making travel mistakes. I could do another one of these in six months and have made 10 more travel mistakes, but that's okay. It's being okay with making mistakes and getting it wrong and apologizing to people as soon as you can and sharing your truth with them and being real and being authentic and being honest. Those are the things that will save you from any travel mistake. So with that, next week, I invite you to the third in our series, which is Experience First Class. We just did first class for the first time. My husband surprised me with it. He's just such a gift. And I want to talk a little bit about it because for so long, I wanted to travel first class. And it has been on every vision board that I have ever created. And the things I learned through sitting in first class were just really interesting. And I know that I have such a degree of privilege to have been able to have done that. And I want to share it with you if you're someone that's like, I want to do first class travel like me too me too so let me share you what I learned because I think that through people's experiences we can learn so that when we go into those environments because if you want to be 24 7 first class 365 honey you can be and I want you to know what to expect and some of the just interesting things that popped from my mind while we were in first class so with that, that is us for today. Thank you so much for being here. And if you are looking for a crowd to take with you while you travel this world, if you're looking for like ride or die entrepreneur friends in your pocket, then you might want to check out the CEO Crowd membership. We would love to have you promote your business to the rest of our network, as well as support you if you're looking to ask those like silly questions along the way, whether it is travel for your business or whether it is what is marketing strategy, whatever questions you have. Because something I shared last week was when I first started my business, I didn't know anything. Whatever questions you have, you genuinely have a direct line to people that will help you. We are a supportive squad and we just love on each other. And if you want to be a part of that, we'd love to have you there. And if you want to check it out and see if it's right for you, then also we have our free networking events that you can come along, you can experience magic and really decide if it is the right choice for you while you embark on this journey of either entrepreneurship or online entrepreneurship around the world. So we'd love to see you there. And until next week, we'll be over here believing in you.